So welcome to this episode of Your Guide on Ghana. Today I'm with Joannes Hotagwa. He has left California. He's left a six-figure job to come to Ghana. Now this sounds like why would you do that? Why in the world would you leave a six-figure job to come to Ghana, West Africa? There's people here who are dying to go over there to get these amazing jobs. So I want to have this great conversation with him today. He is also Sierra Leonean. So I want to hear more about his culture and why Ghana? Like he didn't have to come to Ghana. He could have went to Sierra Leone, but for whatever reason he chose to come here first. So um, we're going to sit down and have a chat with him today. Stay tuned and put questions in the comments if you want to hear more from him I'll share his information you can shoot him an email follow his YouTube channel which is authentic African yes because he's also sharing his journey here from Ghana and Sierra Leone as well right yes so we'll touch on that too So thanks for watching and welcome to this episode today, Joannes. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I first um, saw one of your videos with um, the YouTuber, a friend of yours, right. and then I saw a video with Vanessa Campy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I already knew I wanted to talk to you after the first video that I saw, um, and then I saw the Vanessa one afterwards, because I just found your story to be so interesting so thanks for taking up the time today thanks for having me i appreciate it um so the, the number one question that comes to mind is what were you doing in california yeah. and what made you decide to just pack up and leave it's a great question so uh i moved to california from new york uh to work at a company called hulu um those of you who from the u.s you'll recognize it it's uh, a lot like netflix um a little bit smaller but it's now part of the disney umbrella um, and so I'd always wanted to live in Los Angeles, uh, but I hadn't, hadn't had the opportunity to go there. And this role popped up and they offered to do a relocation, uh, completely moved me across the country. So I moved to California for that job. Uh -huh. um, throughout that process, I had been visiting Sierra Leone uh, over the last five years. And I knew that I wanted to focus my attention, my energy, my efforts on the continent. Um, in terms of advising companies and potentially even doing business here. You know, I got my dual citizenship to Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. I started building a property, got bank accounts, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, started a business even. And so, um, even though I didn't know exactly when it, what I wanted to do, I knew that I wanted to focus my energy here. Uh, and so, I, at some point in time during the pandemic, uh, I just decided that instead of staying in the U.S. to try to focus on advising companies here, um, it just made sense to move here. Um, and since I had visited Ghana during the year of return, mm -hmm. fell in love with Ghana during that, that one week period, I decided to make the move here. So it took you one week to make the decision? It did. I mean, I, I was here for a week um, and I knew I wanted to move to West Africa. Yeah. Uh, but because uh, Sierra Leone is not necessarily as uh, advanced and there aren't as many opportunities in Sierra Leone as of yet, I'm um, working on making sure that they are there, um, it made the most sense for me to come to Accra. Okay. Yeah. Um, so even though you've 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 got land, you're building a house in yeah. Sierra Leone, and you said you started a business. I did. Yeah. You're here in Accra. Yes. So you're laying the foundation over there, and then you're going to also be laying a foundation here in the meantime. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'd like to see what I can learn from here, what's working here, and try to apply it there. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, you know, Sierra Leone is obviously my home. It's my, my, my home country. My parents were both born and raised there. Uh, it's just in terms of uh, the startup environment and the startup community, there's not as many tech startups there. Um, Accra is a city where it, there's a ton of tech startups and there's a ton of tech hubs and incubators and venture capital firms are investing in companies here. And since that's the realm that I'd like to get into, it made the most sense to come here. Um, and the proximity, right? I'm only three and a half hours or so away from flying into Freetown, so it made most sense to, to come here. Yeah. Um, speaking about tech spaces and tech hubs, yeah. what do you think about the fact that Twitter decided to have their African headquarters be in Ghana versus Nigeria? Because I know it's yeah. been a big conversation in yeah, West Africa. Yeah, see, I've seen that. Yeah, it's a, it's a big conversation. Um, it seems quite controversial. Um, you know, I think it probably makes the most sense just in terms of stability. Um, and especially uh, because what I think about Ghana is that it's very welcoming to the outside world. 
right? You know, it says Aquaba everywhere, yeah. right? Which means welcome, right? And uh, you think about going back even to the 70s, right? The, the, in the 60s, the, the Pan-African movement, right? Always talking about Africans in diaspora coming back to Africa with Muhammad Ali and Mal uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, uh, Maya Angelou, all came here. They did. Um, and the first president, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, even the flag is based on the Pan-African colors, right? And so uh, it's just always been more welcoming to the diaspora and to others, right? Yeah. And so um, it probably makes the most sense to have it here, even though some of the roles are focused on Nigeria. I've done some research and mm -hmm. I saw that some of the roles are focused on politics there. Um, and I think it's a little easier to navigate here, from what I understand, um, than it is somewhere like Lagos or Abuja, much bigger cities. Um, and a little bit more happy, mm -hmm. from what I understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so now that you're here, um, what are you doing for work? Because you've left the job you were doing at Hulu, yeah. so what are you doing here now? So a couple of different things. Um, I am a consultant, so an advisor. So I'm advising a couple of companies here on the continent, um, one actually here in Accra, and then um, a nonprofit in Sierra Leone, and then another one in Lagos. Um, and then I'm also the head of advertising at Jamia currently. And how is that going? It's been interesting for sure. Definitely an adjustment, right? Um, coming from the US and uh, just different speed, especially because I spent most of my career in New York mm -hmm. and California felt like a slowdown. So but just imagine taking Jones that real <laughs> yeah, and applying it to West Africa, right? So yeah, I mean, I think that that's been the major adjustment is just the speed yeah. in which things are done. Um, but at the end of the day, the talent is still the same elsewhere. Um, I'm sorry, everywhere. Uh, there's just people are just as capable just as smart, uh, in some cases even smarter here. So, uh, so that's been awesome. I mean, then the other thing too is um, there are people of color in all main leadership roles here in the country, right? At least in the country for Jamia. Whereas where I was previously, there were very few people of color in leadership roles. And so uh, every day is I get to see black excellence. So that to me is a huge uh, benefit to me. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. It's definitely awesome. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you have found to be similar or different between Ghana and Sierra Leone? Because yeah. I know there's a lot of African Americans talking about coming to Africa. West yeah. Africa seems to be the most common place that people talk about coming. Yeah. So I hear people talking about going to places like the Gambia, uh, Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. Senegal, Ghana, Nigeria. Um, so for you having the experiences in Sierra Leone and Ghana, what are some of the things that you would tell people who are thinking of going to one of the two countries? Differences? Yeah, similarities. Sure. So I would say, well, one of the similarities is they're both very lax in terms of <laughs> speed yeah. to get things done, right? So that, I think that's probably a West African thing altogether, or maybe a tropical thing, because you notice that when you go to the Caribbean yeah, or Latin yeah. America yeah. as well. So it's definitely not uh, exclusive to West Africa. Um, but I would say um, there are differences. In Sierra Leone, um, more people speak the pidgin, right? So we call it Creole. And so there's definitely a lot more of that happening there. Um, it's a busier city, even though it's smaller. Really? Yeah, so you'll notice that there are a lot more people out selling like gum and all those different things that people sell, like those individual vendors. Yeah. Um, and it's a happening city, like things are moving all the time. Really? Really, yeah. It's, 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 I was expecting it to be like that here, yeah. but it's a little bit different, right? It's not as um, busy like okay. and on the streets. Um, I would say uh, the other difference is there's a lot more traffic here. There is a lot of traffic here. There's a lot more in traffic Accra, here in Accra. Lot, yeah. And yeah, across specifically. Yeah. Uh, so that I mean, Sierra Leone has some some of the, some of those issues with traffic, but not as much. Um, and I would say beyond that, most of, culturally, mostly are they're similar, right? I would say that there are. I mean, I think the the idea of like service workers who tend to be um, have a reverence for the people they work for, mm -hmm. sir, ma'am, mm -hmm. uh, those kinds of things. So I would say that that's pretty similar. Uh, the cost of living generally is similar. Is it? Generally, for some yeah. Reason I would have thought a crowd was more. Well, I mean, you can make it the same, right? I mean, of course, if you have certain things that you uh, are used to, uh -huh. right, and that you want to experience, like if you want to live in a high rise and things like that, they do have more of those here than you do in, in Sierra Leone. And so that, that would obviously be a major difference. Uh, but like, you know, just a, a two bedroom apartment, the cost of living is about the same. Um, there's a little bit more inflation there in Sierra Leone over the recent uh, years. Um, and I would say that the other difference is honestly, is like what you can find in the supermarket, right? So 
You can find a lot more American products here in supermarkets than you can maybe in Sierra Leone. Um, but I've noticed that there are different varieties of things. So I'm a very big fan of wafers. Yeah. And there's a specific type of wafer. Is uh, there? Yes. <laughs> They're called quadratini. Uh -huh. And they do hazelnut. Oh, I love the hazelnut the wafers. Hazelnuts. I'm not a big wafers person, but okay. I do hazelnuts. Yeah. And so they, I haven't seen them here. And I've been to ShopRites, all the ShopRites. I've been to as many different supermarkets as I can here, and I haven't found them. And they are in abundance. They're in Sierra Leone? They're in abundance in Sierra Leone. <laughs> so that, that's the other difference. Um, but beyond that, I mean, I, I feel like culturally there aren't too many differences in the capital cities, um, just in terms of the way people move and, and how, they, uh, how they do business. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, one more thing I will say. God is very big on politeness as, throughout language, right? Mm -hmm. So if, some, if you ask for something, people say please first. Mm -hmm. Right, so or if they're asking you to do something, so like my Uber driver on the way here was like, Please, your seatbelt, yeah, right. So, you know, usually somebody would just say, Put your seatbelt on, mm -hmm. or can you put your seatbelt on? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, like, yes, please, no, please, um, please is found a lot of, in a lot of areas, yeah. Nice. And you know, that's actually a direct translation from the tree language, yes, yeah, so because heard, in yeah. tree, it's like the pao chao is mm. the tree word for please, uh -huh. and people will say that before they. You know, start like with Pacho Daddy, you know, please know. Yeah. So it's translated directly into English when people speak. So yeah. Yeah, that's that was the major difference. So I even say please a whole lot more than I ever had yeah. previously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yes, use the word please when you're in Ghana with Ghanaians because it's very helpful. Yeah. Because they'll think you're rude if that's you don't. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's 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 rudeness if you don't use the word please. I've yeah. learned that too. I've discovered that. Yeah. yeah. Because we're so used to. I mean, I didn't grow up in the U.S. Um, I did live in Detroit for a short period of time, but mm -hmm. most most of my life was Canada. Mm -hmm. And Toronto, big city, I lived in Niagara, near Niagara Falls, and it's the same kind of thing. People just want to get to the point when you're right. talking. Right. They don't want to fluff over things, but here it's also the greetings are very important. Yes. Saying good morning, Yes. please, how are you, yeah. um, I'm fine, hope all is well, and then you ask for whatever it is that you want to ask. Whereas like in Toronto, if I'm going to ask somebody for something, I would just send them a WhatsApp, hi, and then ask them the question. Yeah. But yeah. here, if you do that, people will think you're being rude. Yeah. Like, I mean, in coming from New York, right, people always ask for directions, right? And they're just like, hey, what's, hey is their way of like, that's the greeting. To get your attention. Like, yeah, yeah. hey, that's the greeting. Hey, uh, which way is blah, 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 blah. Here, like I've noticed, like, especially with Uber drivers, if they're trying to figure out where something is, they'll slow down, they'll stop, and they'll say, you know, good afternoon. You know, sometimes they might even say, how are you? Yeah. Then they say, please, yeah. where is X, Y, and Z, yeah. right? Which adds a little bit more time to it, but it's, it doesn't hurt you to do that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so I think that's just something that I'm picking up that I'll probably do everywhere, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, I just think it's, it's important to be polite, and I think we've lost that in a lot of big cities. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I'll take that with me. Okay, okay. What are um, three things, mm -hmm. three to five things that you have found you really like being gone? So the first thing I'll say is the black excellence um, and just seeing people of color everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's huge. I think it's hard to explain that to people who haven't come here and haven't been able to see that or experience that. Well, you know, it's, it, it reminds you that you're not really a minority. I just was one in the United States, yeah. right? Um, so that's really huge. Uh, I, I don't know how else to describe that, but say like come here and you'll know. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, that's one thing I really love about Ghana. I love the politeness. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've already talked about it, but um, it's just a, it's a reminder of you know the community element, right? And actually caring about what's going on with people, mm -hmm. and not just getting to the thing that you need, mm -hmm. but um, really taking time to ask how someone's doing or to greet them, to say good morning, good afternoon. Um, so I think that that's huge. Um, and although I may sometimes complain about the lax nature of the country, it really is good to just slow down sometimes. Yeah. You know, um, you know when people say stop and smell the roses and then we never did, especially living in New York and mm -hmm. there weren't any roses anyway, right? But like, you know, that, I think that that's another thing that just culturally, I think it was necessary for me yeah. Uh, because I was always running around like like a crazy person, and I never really got a chance to like slow down and pay attention to the world around me, yeah. and to uh, to enjoy life. So 
I would definitely say that's the other, that would be the third thing. Um, and then outside of that too, is the history, you know, and the way they preserve the history of um, what happened here. Even though things that happen are negative, it's important to know, mm -hmm. right, in terms of the enslavement of Africans and um, slave castles and things like that. Uh, but, and in preserving things, like I went to the Shy Hills Wildlife Res uh, Reserve, and so preserving that in, in the way uh, Accra looked before it was colonized or settled, um, those kinds of things I think are hugely important, and you don't see that in a lot of different places. And so uh, that's really cool. I've learned a lot about um, Ghanaian history mm -hmm. um, in maybe a month by going to all these different places. And so that to me I think is, is really cool, is, is that, that preservation of, of history. That's good, that's good. And what are three things that you would tell someone who has never been to the continent of Africa about what they should expect? So one thing is um, it's warmer than you're used to, no matter where you're from, especially if you're like from the West, right? So like if you're North American, right, Canadian, American, um, most places that you live aren't as hot as it is here. Yeah, gone on, gets, it's, it gets pretty hot. <laughs> it gets pretty hot. So be prepared for that. Um, also, just know that like the world, this, that uh, things that you're used to work differently. So for instance, if you're going to move here, cell phone service works different. It's, it's pay as you go. Most of the time in the U.S., the pay-as-you-go plans are more considered like the budget plans, yeah, right? That's like true. Boost Mobile yeah. and all those other ones, right? Those are usually considered budget plans, and most people don't use those plans. They usually just pay like for unlimited whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's a difference. It's a pay-as-you-go. Um, the same thing works for home internet. It's pay-as-you-go. There's very rarely unlimited uh, options. There are some, but the prices are just ridiculous. So you just pay as you go. You just use whatever you need. So I would say that that's definitely another thing that you need to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, that, those two things. Uh, and then beyond that, I would say one other thing to, to know before coming here is um, it's something that I've said recently, but I would not wear white. Um, because there's a lot of stuff under construction and uh, a lot of roads and areas can be a little dusty. Yeah. And so, uh, especially when you're riding around in Ubers, they don't always want to use the AC, so the windows are open. Yes. So you're sweating, yes, and the windows might be open, yes. and so, yeah, there's dust, and so, like, the seatbelt might have dust on it, you know? Um, and so, you know, just, I, w I wouldn't wear white unless you're going to be uh, driving in your own personal transportation, mm -hmm. and you're going to have your windows up, and it's all AC. Mm -hmm. That In that case, then go for it. <laughs> but if you're going to be riding in an Uber or a Trotro or anything <laughs> like that, I would not wear white. So um, that I would make sure I mention because... Um, Although it's not a huge deal, you know, you don't want to have a white stripe. It, it's, it's really funny you say that because yeah. um, some years back, a friend of mine, she was like, she was like, I have to buy a car because she wore a lot of light colors. Yeah. And she said when she sat down, and this was before Uber came to Ghana. Okay. Uber came to Ghana in 2016. Okay. So this was before. And she said, I have to decide in the taxi, do I want to think of safety or do I want to go and arrive in clean clothes? Because she's like, if she puts the belt on, she has this brown stripe right. across her her, right. her top. So um, definitely something to think about. And someone else I know started wrapping the seatbelt in a handkerchief to make sure. Mm, that that's the actually a good pro tip. That's a good pro tip. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely say that. I mean, and it's not like I rode here today with this shirt on and obviously my shirt doesn't have a stripe on it, I would just not wear white. Any other colors you should be fine with, even if yeah. it has some white in it. Um, and so in those cases, I don't want to scare anybody off and have them thinking <laughs> like, it's so dusty. But just when you wear a white shirt, that's what you're going to have to deal with. So I would recommend maybe not wearing white shirts mm -hmm. or um, having it hung up on something or holding it. Um, and have a shirt on underneath maybe, and then put the shirt on when you go to wherever your you're going. That's another pro tip. I, somebody gave me that as well. And I was like, oh, that's a good one, just in case I need to, to go somewhere with, a, with a, uh, a white shirt or a dress shirt on. So, interesting, interesting. Yeah. So, okay, so, you know, winding down, sure. um, I would love to know what are your plans as far as going between yeah. Sierra Leone and Ghana? Because you're going to be going back and forth because I think you're going there soon. Yes. And then you'll be coming back. Is this going to be a regular thing going back and forth? Absolutely. Yeah. So, and that was part of why I wanted to be here on the continent too. It was one for advising companies on the continent, 
Um, but two is because I'm building a property in Sierra Leone right now, and I did need to be close enough in proximity so that I could fly back and forth uh, without paying thirteen hundred plus dollars per flight. Um, like it's like three hundred dollars a flight, which is so much cheaper. Um, so yeah, I'm building a house in Sierra Leone. Um, as we speak, uh, I have, I'm having work done. And so I need to be there in person for some of these things. These are like large items that need to be done, like excavation. And so you just kind of want to be there for that. And so I'll be going on Friday. I'll be there for minimum of three weeks, max maybe four. Uh, and I'll probably do that once a quarter just to make sure that I'm there to supervise things as the house goes up. Uh, and so that, that's the plan for now. Um, and then eventually, as you know, businesses go up and things like that, I'll probably be going more often. Uh, I'd like to have self-sustaining life in Sierra Leone eventually, and so maybe I'd move back to Sierra Leone full time. But until then, I'll have to live here, mm -hmm. visit there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so now that uh, you're here, and you mentioned, I want to backtrack really uh, quickly before we close. Sure. You mentioned being here for a week during your return yes. and making the decision that you were going to come and stay in Ghana. Yeah. What was it that prompted you to come to Ghana? Was it hearing about the year of return activities or were you just coming to West Africa already? Well, I was coming to West Africa already, but so I was in Sierra Leone. I, I remember this vividly because we were. I was just talking about this with my friend like two weeks ago. So um, in Sierra Leone at the end of the year and, and like most places in West Africa, right, all the diasporans come back for December for December right and so I started going to Sierra Leone in December uh, three years ago four years ago and so I was there with some friends and um, we we're all on one of the social media networks I'm not gonna promote them uh, one of the social media networks and w while we're looking at it um, we see that there's a bunch of like Nigerian Americans or like African Americans in Ghana and we're like why is everyone in Ghana specifically right yeah. And so this is 2018. And so, um, you know, it was interesting and it looked like fun, right? There was a lot of, there was a lot of buzz about people going to Ghana. It was like, all right, well, we need to go to Ghana next year. Like we're gonna, we're gonna come here first, we're gonna spend some time here, but we're gonna go to Ghana next year. And so this is long before we even heard of the year of return. Okay. You know, we just knew that that's what we wanted to do. And since I've, my friends who were living in Sierra Leone had also lived in the diaspora. Actually, some of them I'd met before even coming here. And um, they had always spoke glowingly of Ghana. And so they knew, so when we decided, like it was an easy decision. Everybody was like, let's just do it. And so once like it hit like February and we started talking about our flights and when we were going, um, that's when we started noticing a buzz around the year of return, right? And so we started looking into it and we saw that there was gonna be Afro Nation, Afro Chella, and all these other things. And so um, we had already made the decision to come before we knew about that, but that, that then created our itinerary. Once we knew, because we just thought we were gonna come here. Yeah. But once we knew that those, those festivities were happening, then we knew what we were going to do once we got here. Mm -hmm. And so right around October, we started like focusing on, all right, this is what we're gonna do these days, this is where we're gonna stay, et cetera, et cetera. And so, uh, and then when I got here, I, I, uh, one of the companies that I was advising, I got a chance to uh, sit in with uh, one of the companies they're advising, and I saw like their elaborate setup. It's, uh, they own some radio stations and some TV stations, so I saw the production room, I saw the server rooms, um, I saw where they actually filmed the news, and I had been to places like that in the U.S., and it was comparable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'd like to believe that I didn't have in low expectations, but I did. You know, it was like, oh, this is West Africa, so there's no way it's going to be as good as the U.S. And I was blown away mm -hmm. by how the production value was, like how everything was set up. And so, for me, that, that reinforced the idea that I could do business here, right? And so since I had earlier that year had already opened up a business in Sierra Leone, it just further enforced it and it, it, um, it led me to believe that if I was to move to West Africa at some point, I'd probably start in Accra. Um, and I started focusing on at least advising companies in Accra first uh, and then applying for jobs here um, from the U.S. And that was all because of that one week, right? Um, and so like it, it took about a year and a half before I was like, I want to move here. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I had already planted the seed, or being here had already planted the seed that I knew that I could come here and that I could have uh, a life and build a business. 
That's amazing. That's amazing. So, how can people follow you? I mentioned that you have a YouTube channel, so yes. tell everyone how they can subscribe to your channel yeah. or if you're on, on, on other social media platforms as well. Sure. So, uh, on YouTube, you can find me at Authentic African. Uh, either one word or two words, you'll find my channel. Um, and on Instagram, it's at authentic underscore African. Thank you so much today for spending the time with me to you. share your story. I'm really excited about this because he's another example of somebody who's made the decision to relocate to the African continent and will be helping to change the narrative here in Africa by making an impact through the things that he does. The consulting work you're doing, I'm sure, is helping so many countries. And you're also going to be somebody who you know young people can look to, you sure. know whether it's mentorship or you know learning from. I think that's one of the other key components of people like us from the diaspora Absolutely. being here is having that opportunity to engage also with the youth about you know things that they can be doing to help their countries um, prosper and move forward. So thank you so much, and thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Oh.